Welcome to the second episode of Afternoon. I'm Haley. And I'm Meredith. Coming up tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day and we've got a few fun facts for you. St. Patrick wasn't actually from Ireland. He was Roman Britain and was kidnapped by Irish pirates and then brought to Ireland. In Ireland, there's a legend that St. Patrick banished all of the snakes into the sea and that's why no six snakes exist in Ireland. That's why I want to go to Ireland, because snakes Nasty. Biggest fear. Yeah, I don't like snakes either. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the highest number of leaves found on the clover was 14. Wow, that's a lot. I don't even think I've ever found a four-leaf clover. <laughs> nope, neither have I. Student Council is running a March Madness game. Selection ends tomorrow and the winner will receive a gift card. You can find the steps on the Farmtown Student Council Instagram at Farmtown Studs. Have you signed up for the March Madness yet, Haley? Not yet. Have you? I have. I chose based on the colors and the logos that I liked. That's an interesting strategy. Educated guesses. We have a new Instagram for the show this trimester. We'll be using this Instagram to send out polls, information, and award prizes for different games in the show. You can follow us at fhsnews.now. We have a very exciting new addition that will be a part of our show this trimester. It's our new mascot, our fish. The only problem it's, it's dead right now, but not really. It's alive, I promise. He likes to play dead a little bit, but I he's promise kind of, he's alive. He's possum-y. Anyway, he doesn't have a name yet, so we'll be asking you guys for your help to name it. You can go to our Instagram story under fhsnews.now to vote and give... He's not... He's alive, I promise. There he is. <laughs> to vote and give suggestions on what to name the fish. Voting will begin shortly after, so go ahead and follow us right now. We brought this up last week, but the question of which are there more of, doors or wheels in the world, has been a very debated topic recently. So we went to you guys in the comments to figure out what your thoughts were, and here are some of your guys' thoughts. Hey FHS, I'm Will Hornblad. I'm also going out with Holly right now, and we're going to go ask some questions in the lunchroom. All right, so for our first question, we have the highly debated tip topic right now. Is there more wheels in the world or more doors in the world? Let's go find out. Is there more doors or more wheels in the world? My bet's on wheels. And why do you say wheels? Uh, I suppose cars have four wheels and four doors, but I mean, everybody has a spare wheel on their car, so there's five wheels and four doors. That's a good point, thank you. I'm gonna say that there are more wheels. I have, I just, I think there's more wheels. You, you just think there's more wheels? I, on, well, you gave me five seconds to think about it, but yeah, I would say that there's more wheels. Do you have any other reasoning aside from just thinking that? Um, well, <laughs> I, I feel like, on a, on a, man, not really, no. I just think that there's more wheels. It's just like a gut feeling? It's a gut, it's a gut reaction. It's an instinct. I was born with that instinct, yeah. Oh, good question. I'm going to say more wheels. I'm going to say more wheels. I don't know. It just seems like it be more than doors. I mean, sometimes there's not a door on like a door frame. I don't know. Um, I would say doors because I feel like everywhere you go, there's doors like literally everywhere. So I'd have to go with doors. Probably doors. And why would you say doors? There's a lot of doors. There's definitely more wheels, um, just because there's wheels on everything, it just kind of cancels out. There's more wheels. But like, what about like the science rooms? Like, there's definitely way more doors if you count like cabinet doors in there. Okay, yeah, but you also have rolling chairs. There's also wheels on literally everything. All right, let's go with doors. So you take this school, there's about a million doors in here. Take cars, let's say you have two billion cars, that's four wheels per car, take four times, what did I say, two billion? That's only eight billion. You take how many houses and uh, things and cars, cars, do cars have doors too, that's more. But think about all like the toys that have wheels on them. Those wheels count too though. But they don't because I said so. But I say they do because I say so. Okay, well in that case there are more wheels. But in my reality there are more doors. 
Wheels, Legos. How many billions of toy, toy cars have they made? Wheels for sure. But like, what about like the U-Haul places? I mean, technically those garage doors count as doors and like the storage cabinets and like all the cabinets in schools count as doors too, right? Yes, but every single drawer has two to four, two to six wheels in it because it has to have like the rolling mechanism to pull out a drawer. But that's, that's a hinge, not a wheel. I said a drawer, not a door. There's definitely more doors. And why do you say doors? Just think about it. There's like cruise ships, there's like U-Haul places, doors. Definitely doors. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, doors. And why do you say that? I don't know. I can see a lot of doors, but not a lot of wheels. That's a good point. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, FHS. I really appreciate all you guys' cooperation and your answers. Personally, I think there's probably gonna be more wheels in the world, especially when you consider there's been like six billion Hot Wheels that have been sold. Each Hot Wheel has what four wheels, so roughly 24 billion wheels guaranteed. I mean, I really think the argument just ends there. Thank you guys for your opinions. What do you think, Meredith? Doors or wheels? I was a hardcore door person for a really long time, but like, I've been presented with some pretty good evidence that there's more wheels in the world. Yeah, I was doors at first too, but you know, I think I've got to go with wheels. There's mm -hmm. yeah. my educated opinion. Now let's throw it over to Will Hornblad at the, bra at the desk for a brand new top 10. again with another top 10 this time I'm actually joined by my co-host the goldfish um he wasn't really swimming a whole lot earlier so I'm a little concerned about him but he'll be all right um so this week's topic is top 10 fast food places um last week I heard you guys were everyone was a fan of the uh, coconut mall being at number one especially the band room so thank you for that that made me feel really happy and uh, without further ado let's jump right into it at number 10 we have McDonald's I feel like this is just your control group fast food place. Like, it can't really get much better than this, nor can it get much worse than this. You know, it's affordable. You go there with your friends, and, you know, you, you get your food and you get out. At number nine, we have the only pizza place on this list. Uh, it's Little Caesars. Um, the reason why I chose Little Caesars is because it's so affordable, and most of the time it's pretty good. I know Meredith is going to object to this because she said she used to work there, and she had some not so like, not, she, she just didn't enjoy it, guys. And, you know, sometimes you have a job you don't enjoy. But I enjoy Little Caesars, and that's what counts. Number eight, um, I I don't know, guys. You guys are probably not going to be very happy with this, but it's Cane's. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, okay? I can I can feel you guys yelling in your TC or your, your fifth hour rooms right now. But... Me and Wayne, we sat down, we had a long debate about this, and we both just agreed that every time we go there, the consistency isn't there, you know? And, and really, when you think about it, at the end of the day, it's the sauce that carries. You know, it's, it's all in the sauce. And the chicken tenders, they're good, but they're kind of bland. Like, there's not a whole lot of seasoning in them. Uh, the fries are always soggy. Nobody eats the coleslaw. Like, if you eat the coleslaw, um, tip of the hat to you. That's, that's I don't know. That's a little scary. Uh, number seven, we have Panda Express. This is just my favorite, you know, chain Chinese place. Um, you know, Panda logo is pretty cool. And Chinese food, it's hard to go wrong there. Number six, we got Jimmy John's. This is the only sandwich shop on the list. Um, I feel like Jimmy John's is the compromise between, you know, like the Subway fans and the Jersey Mike's fans. Oh, oh, Devin played a laugh track. Thank you, Devin. Um... I don't know. I feel like it's, it's also kind of falls in between that range, too, because like Subway is pretty affordable. Jersey Mike's is known for being like higher quality, but also kind of expensive. And Jimmy John's is like that middle ground. So I feel like everyone can agree on that. Uh, number five, you know, the list really wouldn't be complete without it. It's Chipotle. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, there's Qdoba, there's Panchero and there's Chipotle. And I just feel like while personally, I'm more of a Panchero's fan myself. You know, game recognizes game and Chipotle probably takes the crown out of those three. Number four, I feel like this is a place that you could go to with all your friends and everyone would find something that they like. It's Culver's. Um, you know, you're not in the mood for a burger. See, Devin agrees with it. The sound guy knows what's up. Um, if you're not in the mood for a burger, great, get ice cream. If you're not in the mood for ice cream, great, get a burger. If, if you want cheese curds, then you get cheese curds. You know, it's a Midwestern restaurant. Pretty hard to go wrong there. Number three, I feel like this is the pinnacle of all burger places. This is, you know, this is the, what it, you know, what a burger place should be. It's five guys. Um, see, another, another valid placement. Devin agrees, guys. 
Um, you go there and you always get more fries than you bargain for. You ask for a pond and they give you an ocean. You ask for a moon and they give you a planet. There is, they don't, they don't cut you short at five guys. And we appreciate that here at the top 10 list. Um, number two, this is for my friend, Joey. He's a big fan of Taco Bell. So here's to you, Joey. Taco Bell. I feel like this is another place like Culver's where, you know, you're not in the mood for tacos. Great. You get a Baja Blast. You're not in the mood for a Baja Blast. Great. You get tacos. Or, you know, they brought nacho fries back, guys. And nacho fries are just so good. Um, I feel like there's, there's something for everyone at Taco Bell. You know, you can't go wrong there. And number one, this isn't a lot of people. I, number one, drum roll. This isn't a lot of people's number one, but it's my number one because I think the food's pretty good. It's Chick-fil-A. Hard to go wrong there. You know, the classic chicken sandwich. You got your waffle fries. You got your uh, iced tea. But uh, the lemonade there is pretty good. I don't know. I think I think cane sauce is better than Chick-fil-A sauce. I don't know. Chick-fil-A sauce is kind of sweet for my taste. But I don't know. I just feel like uh, Chick-fil-A, it, it deserves at the top. You know, those those employees are also really nice. And uh, I, I don't know. I was looking at other top tens, and they always, like, outperform other restaurants financially. So I guess financially they're the big dog. And now... You know, top 10 list concluded. Thank you so much for uh, listening. And now I'm going to throw it over to Meredith and Haley. Thanks, Will. What do you think about the list, Meredith? Two, two opinions on that. First of all, Taco Bell, Baja Blast, best thing at Taco Bell. I agree. I mean, they wanted to charge me $15 to DoorDash a Baja Blast yesterday. Ridiculous. <laughs> Also, I've never had Canes, so I You've don't... You've never had Canes? No. I I think that Canes deserved higher on the list, but Chick-fil-A is good. But you know, Canes deserves their justice. Mm -hmm. Canes is really good, and you For need sure. to try Canes. Well, um, coming up next, Leo and Will will be talking about some sports um, and Tom Brady's recent announcement. Over to Will and Leo. Uh, camera oh, two. <laughs> we're yeah, I was supposed to be three, but we were supposed to have an interview today like we did last week, but unfortunately that didn't work out. So instead, Will and I are just going to talk a little bit about Tom Brady. So Tom Brady. He's back. Hey, yeah, he's back. He only could stay retired for two months. I mean, you can't kill a legend, and Tom Brady is certainly a legend. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Leo? What do you think about, what do you think about this? I mean, no one really thought he was done. I mean... I thought he was done. You know, Drew Brees is gone. Aaron Rodgers is, you know, kind of approaching the end. I thought, you know, we're seeing the end of that those early 2000s draft class, and, you know, we're going to see this new era of quarterbacks, you know? Yeah, Brady coming back really isn't surprising news. I mean, he pulled he pulled the Brett Favre um, coming out of retirement um, when you said you were going to retire. Oh, like, yeah. 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 And... I don't know. I feel like, I mean, you were talking about this earlier. Now now Aaron Rodgers has some competition now for the Super Bowl. Yeah, I was really worried because I'm a big Vikings fan, as a lot of people watching know. I even got like a Vikings jersey on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I'm a big Vikings fan. So I was really worried when Aaron Rodgers re-signed. I was worried that the Packers were going to win the NFC. I was worried that they weren't going to have any competition. But now that Brady's back, I'm a little bit more confident in the Buccaneers and that they'll stop the Packers. And I mean, there's other teams that could stop them too, like the Rams. Um, like the Rams could go back again. Oh, yeah, I, but you know, I, I was worried about the Packers, um, them resigning Rodgers after Brady retired, but now Brady's back, so. I don't know, I want I yeah. want Joe Bird. Joe Bird deserved that ring, I think. And yeah. we, we were let down. But uh, I don't know, I feel like, you know, we're kind of in that stage of the NFL where a lot of these like franchise people are slowly starting to, you know, not want to be with their teams anymore, especially like Devonte Adams in Green Bay right now. I, I yeah. think he wants out pretty desperately. Yeah, he like got a franchise tag for one year, Have, but I mean he's not like getting paid that much. Like even like Christian Kirk now is making more money than him. Yeah, and uh, you said just recently Carl Nissib didn't he get didn't he like just get released? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's crazy, you know. I, that's what I've been really enjoying about like that's what I enjoy so much about springtime is you know the NFL has a lot of these you know transition moments and you know big shocker plot twists tom brady's coming back yeah. tom brady's retiring uh you know we released blank whatever yeah i mean even though brady is 44 and he's going to be 45 next year i think him retiring was more of a shock than him saying he's going to come back yeah how do you feel about about the name the washington commanders washington commanders 
I mean, it's just a generic name. I feel like we wanted something more special. Um, and yeah, it's just it's like any other team. I don't think it's a bad name. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a mediocre name. I feel like we wanted something special. Like there were some military groups or like specific stuff that they were gonna name their stuff after. I don't know all the details and stuff. But um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's disappointing, but it's not like incredibly exciting either. And. Oh my gosh, I, we, we totally went, almost went without talking about this, but uh, Russell Wilson, he's now in Denver. Yeah, he's a Bronco. That's crazy. He beat him in the Super Bowl, and now he's Now, now he's them. there. I don't know. I, I've always been a big Russell Wilson fan. He came from Wisconsin. I'm a big uh, Wisconsin Badgers and Backers fan myself, so I'm kind of excited to see what he does next to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, Devin. All right, well, that's kind of all we got for sports today, guys, so we're going to throw it back over to Haley and Meredith. Thank you guys so much. Fun fact, I share a birthday with Tom Brady. Really? So that's the only thing I know about football. That's interesting. <laughs> the boys' basketball team is still moving along in the, oh goodness, single 4A playoffs. Mr. Mathis has some highlights from the Saturday game, so let's take a look at that. This was the third matchup between these teams, and defense was the name of the game early. Brendan Ebel with the steal, ahead to Ben Biskins, across to Kyle Hernser. He's going to take the long range three, and it's good. And the Tigers take an early lead. Still in the first half, Hernser playing defense again on his own end of the floor, gets the steal. He heads towards the basket, slams it down for two of his 15 points. It's a second half action. This was a back and forth affair. Here's Hernser going inside. There's a great bounce pass to Zach Kokenauer, who goes up for the shot, misses, gets his own rebound and scores and is fouled for a three-point play, igniting the Tiger faithful. After South tied it up again, this time it's Connor Todd with the nice baseline move and the one-handed floater off the backboard, and it's good to get Farmington the lead, 34 to 32. The Tigers were up two points late in the game. Brendan Ebel tries to go baseline, but gets hemmed in. He somehow finds Sam Hoffman, who launches the three, and it's good, and the Tigers go on to win. 55 to 47. They will go on to play the section final Friday night at Mayo Civic Arena versus Owatonna. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mathis, for the highlights of the basketball game. So now we are going to do our um, weekly teacher interview with Ms. Schmeichel and Ms. Dimmich, our super cool choir directors. So, Haley? Okay. Nope, we're doing weather. Sorry. Sorry. We're doing weather. My bad. All right, guys, I'm back. Got the freshman year weather graphic back. Had to go a while back in the files to find it, but I did weather with Will. I even added a smiley winky face for you guys because I know a lot of you guys were a fan when I did weather. So without further ado, <laughs> let's get into the forecast for this week. So today, it's really warm, guys. I'm really excited about it. It's like the first day in a really long time that it doesn't feel like... See, even Devin's excited. The sound guy's excited, guys. It's a good day. It's 60 degrees out, guys. 60 degrees, low of 31. Uh, cloudy, but it looks like it's pretty sunny outside, so me and my fellow track athletes should have a lot of fun at practice today. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, it's looking at a high of 47, low of 29, mostly cloudy, but with a little bit of sun. And then as we move into, oh, sorry, it's weird. You always kind of got to feed that negative, uh, I don't know. My, my screen that I'm working off of right now is a little weird. All right, Friday, we're looking at a high of 46, low of 29, mostly sunny, you know, hard to complain there. Saturday, high of 54, low of 34, sunny. This week is just looking great, guys. And then on Sunday, we're looking at our warmest with a high of 61 and a low of 47, mostly cloudy, but hey, you know, it still should be warm enough for you guys to get out there and have some fun. And now I'm going to throw it over to Haley, and I believe she has an interview with us. No, never mind. It's a Meredith. My bad. <laughs> I'm back, guys. Everyone makes mistakes, right? That's what keeps live shows interesting. So the weather looks like it's going to be super nice this week. I'm really excited to hang out outside. Um, now we are going to go over to Miss Leafblad with a special announcement um, from the school. Hi, my name is Ms. Leafblad and I want to call your attention if you are a junior or a senior and you speak a language other than English in your household. If you can read, write, understand and speak a language besides English, please look at the Schoology announcement that went out this morning about the Minnesota Bilingual SEALs test. This is a test we are offering. It's a one day shot this spring for juniors and seniors. It's either Tuesday, April 12th or Wednesday, April 13th, depending on which language you speak. And you can find that in the Schoology announcements, but you need to sign up 
by this Friday. So you can find a link to the sign up in this Schoology announcement. You fill out a Google form. The test costs $19.90, but you can get a scholarship if needed. The test is during the school day, and what it will allow you to do is earn free college credits at any of the U of M schools in the state. It allows you to get a seal on your diploma. It allows you to write that you have this level of proficiency on job applications and resumes for the rest of your life. This is a great opportunity for you and for the school to value the language that you speak at home. Please check out the Schoology announcement if you are a junior or senior who speaks another language besides English at home. Thank you. What a super cool opportunity. Thank you so much, Ms. Leafblad. Now we get to talk to our choir directors, now that I actually know what's happening. So over to Haley. Thanks, Meredith. Today I have Ms. Dimich and Ms. Schmeichel and here with me today. How are you guys doing? So good. Great. Yeah. Yeah, are you guys enjoying the weather? Yes. 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 Oh, it's, it's really so nice. nice. Though. Um, so I have a few questions for you. So what was the last movie or musical that you guys saw? Cool. Um, is it lame if I say Encanto, but no, I've seen it like movie. 12 times because of my children? Yep. So I'm going to say that. I actually think Encanto might have been the last one <laughs> I saw because I feel like I was the last person in the world to see it because everyone was like, you haven't seen it yet. And finally, Miss Dimage texted me and was like, you're watching it tonight. tonight. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's my last Did one. Did you like it? <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was good. Mm. It's not as good as like Tangled. I agree. Sorry. Tangled is really good. Yeah. Um, what was college like for you guys, and where did you guys go? You can go first. Okay. Um, I went to school um, at a small school in Minneapolis called North Central University, and um, it was really great. I loved it a lot, um, learned a lot, made a lot of really good friends, and still close with them today. Yeah, I had a similar experience. I went to Concordia College in Moorhead, and I know I talk about it a lot because I really, really love it, but I think that... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, but I think that... The most important thing is like really getting invested anywhere you go, yeah. and if it's right for you, you will love it. So yeah, yeah, I agree. That's really important. Did either of you ever change your major, or did you always stick with the same thing? I always did this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your go-to meal or place that you love to eat? Okay, my favorite restaurant right now is the Farmer and the Fishmonger in Apple Valley, and they have raw oysters that are so delicious. If you want to try something adventurous. <laughs> If you want to try something adventurous, <laughs> you should go there because it's, it's really delicious. I believe you. Yeah, I I'm really sure do. you do. Um, <laughs> my favorite place that I've been to recently is called Barrio. Um, I think they're in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Yeah, there's a couple locations. Um, and it's just like really fresh, really good Mexican food. Their guac is so good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just fun to taste food that's like so fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard of that, but that sounds really yeah. good. Um, I hear that the next choir concert is coming up pretty soon. When is it and what time and who is performing at which times? All right. Well, our concert is tomorrow, Haley. Yep. <laughs> Are you going to attend? I will be attending. Oh. That's good, because she's important, and she's in <laughs> choir. <laughs> um, so it's tomorrow, and we have concerts at 6 and 7.30 p.m., mm -hmm. and the first concert features of our like regular class choirs, it's men's and women's choir, and then our second one is Cantabile and Concert Choir. Yeah, and this concert's going to be really cool because we're featuring music from all around the world. So we're singing in 13 different languages yeah. um, from almost every continent, so it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, why did you guys choose this theme for this concert? We just wanted to showcase all of the beautiful music in the world that's not just our own cultures and really celebrate cultures yeah. of other people. And we think it's so cool that everywhere you go in the world, music is a part of their life. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, people sing, and that's important to them. Um, and so, you know, we're not alone in, in that, and we wanted to celebrate all the different ways people can do that and all the different ways that it sounds. Yeah, I agree. I'm really having a fun time singing in all the new languages that we've learned. Um, are there any other choir events coming up soon that we should be looking forward to? Yeah, in just a short month and a half, we have Cabaret, which is like our big musical theater and variety showcase. And it's really, really fun, showcases talents of all of our students in very different ways than a regular choir concert. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's really exciting. It's going to be crazy cool. April 30th. Yeah. 3 and 7 p.m. Yes. Yes. Be there. And for my last question, what is something that most people don't know about you guys? Hmm. Um, four years ago, I taught myself how to whistle. 
I never knew how to do it before, and I always thought it was something like you were born with. And then um, one year, anytime I was like, I had passing time between classes, I would just practice over and over again. And now I can whistle. So don't you know, believe what you hear. You that's interesting learn. that you say that because a fun fact about me is that I'm a terrible whistler. Really? I can sing in tune all day long. I cannot whistle a melody. If you did mm. one, I could not repeat it. That's sad. I know. Ew. Yeah, I'm with you. I can't whistle either. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming on. And now we're going to throw it back over to Meredith. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited to watch the concert tomorrow, especially to see Haley perform. Last week, we introduced a riddle. It'll show up soon. There you are with a location to find in the school. We're extending the hunt another week, and the form will be in our Instagram bio, fhsnews.now. So if you haven't yet, go follow, go vote on the fish, because he needs a name. I'm tired of calling it it. Um, the winner will get a Culver's gift card, so submit your guesses by Tuesday. Today we're going to finish up our show by playing a game, so feel free to play with us, and we will be playing Guess That Movie, hosted by one of our producers, Holly Foss. Thanks for that, Haley. Okay, so we're gonna be playing Guess That Movie. I'm going to be giving two hints and a quote, and then you guys try to guess um, what the movie is. So, your first hint is, it's a murder mystery. The second hint is that the fam family members are the suspects, and the quote is, you make a pretty lousy murderer. What do you think the movie is? Hmm, I don't know, I haven't seen a lot of murder mysteries. Is it the one with Chris Evans and the sweater? Like the, like the sweater? What's it called? Knives Out? Yeah! Is it Knives Out? Is it that out? one? It is Knives Out. Good job, oh, guys. that's good. <laughs> Look at um, that. That's a good movie. So for the next movie, your first hint is it's a comedy and it's a musical. And the second hint is it's about an acapella group. And the quote is, even though some of you are pretty thin, you all have fat hearts, and that's what really matters. Uh, I know it. It's Pitch Perfect 2. I know it's the second one because Fat Amy says it, and that's one of my favorite movies. It is. Good job, Haley. I thought yeah. you were going to get that. <laughs> It's perfect, perfect. It's perfect one. It might be one, but I don't know. Okay, so for the third movie, the first hint is it is one of the most popular movies of all time, and the second hint is I love you 3000, okay. and the quote is, I guess that's a quote too, but I get emails from a raccoon, so nothing sounds crazy anymore. So I know it. Yeah. It's Avengers Endgame. Personally, I didn't think Avengers Endgame was that good. I might get a little, like, I don't know, hate for this one, but I thought Infinity War was better. I gotta disagree with you, Meredith. I thought Endgame was better, but um, you are correct. <laughs> so, and um, for the fourth and final movie, your first hint is it's based off of one of the most popular books of all time. Your second hint is short people with fair, hairy feet. Thanks to one of my friends for coming up with that one. And the quote is, I don't know and I would rather not guess. I have no idea. What? <laughs> Hold on, I will, I will spitball here. Go for it. In Star Wars, there's the like short little Chewbacca people. Is it, is it Star Wars? It's not Star is Wars. It, okay. The Lorax? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I really thought that was it. Uh, is there like some sort of thing that's like a... I have no idea. Short people with hairy feet? This is a... This is a good I don't one. know. I don't know. I give up. Uh, it was the Lord of the Rings. Wait, okay, wait. Is it like that Hobbit thing? I've never seen the Lord of the Rings, so I'm probably going to get hate for that too. But. I've never seen the Lord of the Rings either, though. Oh, We're in it well, together. I've yeah. only seen the first one, so. Thank yeah. you guys so much for playing. I hope you enjoyed, and back to you, Haley and Meredith. Thanks, Holly. That was really yeah. fun. What's your favorite movie? Pitch Perfect. No. Which one? Uh, one, two, three. I don't know. I think the first one and the third one are tied for the top, and then the second one is, like, next. But they're all really good. My favorite movie is The Princess Bride. If you've known me for any amount of time, you should know that. Yep. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah. Um, make sure to vote on our Instagram for the fish to name it. And this has been the afternoon show. Have a great, have a great afternoon, afternoon, FHS. FHS.